morning. Any prayer requests as we would begin? Unspoken. Unspoken. Yes, uh, m- uh, my wife's stepfather, and it's, well, Lord knows. Any other? Yes. Unspoken. Unspoken. Greg Olive. Uh, yeah, done. Okay. Okay. All right, let's all lift up our voice together to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come before thy throne of grace. And it is by thy grace, Lord, that we do stand. But Lord, you've seen the prayer request has gone before thee, Lord. We ask, Lord, that this time, Lord, that you meet the needs, whether it be in spoken, Lord, whether it be a body or soul or spirit, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you can meet those needs, Lord. We pray for thy nation, Israel. But, Lord, we have come here to worship thee and to fellowship with thee this day. And we thank you, Lord, for another day of life. For ask this now in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated at this time and have the song leader come lead us in the song service. Praise the Lord. It's good to see everybody out this morning. Just thankful to the Lord for a good week, for his mercy and grace. And I was watching the news this week, and uh, I seen a clip of uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the president of Israel, and he was talking about uh, the land that belongs to Israel that is in Iran. I think he kind of put them on warning. I think they're coming to get it, so. It's exciting times. It's, it does something in my heart. I'm just, praise the Lord. Mercy rewrote my life. Mercy rewrote my life I should have fallen my soul cast down but mercy rewrote my life mercy rewrote my life I should have fallen my soul cast down but mercy rewrote my life mercy rewrote my life I should have fallen my soul cast down but mercy rewrote my life just a little longer and the trump of God will sound just a little longer and we'll all be glory bound just a little longer redemption growing Sky. Just a little longer, and 
the trump of God will sound Just a little longer And we'll all be glory bound Look away to Jesus Our redemption draw at night just a little longer and we'll meet him in the sky just a little longer and the trump of god will sound just a little longer and we'll all be glory bound Look away to Jesus, our redemption draw at night. Just a little longer, and we'll meet Him in the sky. Just a little longer, and the trump of God will sound. Just a little longer And we'll all be glory bound Look away to Jesus Our redemption draw at night Just a little longer And we'll meet Him in the sky Thanks, thanks, I'll give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I'll give you thanks. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Thanks. Thanks, I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Thanks. Thanks, I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks.
maybe evening, morning, or at noon. The wedding of the bride united with the groom. We shall see the king when he comes. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. Blessed hour, we shall see the King when He comes. Are you ready? Should your Savior call today? Would Jesus say, Would well, done or go away? My home is pure, the vows can never stay. We shall see the King. When he comes, we shall see the king. See the king. We shall see the king when he comes. He's coming in the work. Hail the blessed hour. We shall see the king when he comes. Are you ready for the call to crown your Savior, King Lord? Thank you, Lord. The kingdoms of this world shall soon before him fall. We shall see the King when he comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He's coming in power. Hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. Coming in power, hail the blessed hour. He shall see the king when he comes. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. He's coming in power, hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Thank you, Lord. I wonder if we can do 194 across the page. For His cleansing power Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb Are you fully trusting in this grace this hour Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb Are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments white? white as snow 
Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Aside the garments that are stained with sin, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. In the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Yes, I'm washed. Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank God. <clears throat> Which, what number is this? 517. Keep me burning, give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing. Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give me all in my land, keep me burning. Give me all in my land, I pray. Give me all. Burning till the break of Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give me all in my land, give me burning. Give me all in my land, I pray. 
Give me all in my life. Give me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing. Hosanna to the King. Thank you, Father. I can see a bright light shining for me. It's far away, but the pull is strong. Someday this old road won't be so long. So when that morning finally gets here When I reach my journey's end I'll be waiting at the gate For Him to open up and let me in I have seen a lot of signs that have led me to this place. And I know I'm on the right way to the place where I shall see His face. Finally gets here when I read my journey's end. I'll be waiting at the gate for him to open. Let me in. I have seen. Out of sign that have led me to this place, and I know I'm on the right way to the place where I shall see his face. We're on the right way to win that moment. Finally gets here when I read my journey's end. I'll be waiting at the gate for him to open up and let me in. So when that moment. Morning finally gets here When I read my journey's end I'll be waiting at 
the gate for him to open and let me in. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister Joyce, do you have a song this morning? Thank you, Lord. We're living in exciting times. I just find every day as uh, time goes, it's just uh, there's so much going on. And uh, I'm just watching Israel, and you know, the bride is running parallel to what's taking place and always anticipating, waiting for what's going to happen next. So I'm just thankful that uh, the Lord has, allows us to see the big picture. We have an understanding in our hearts what's taking place and where we are in time. I'm just so excited. I'm thankful. Just a little chorus. I don't know if you could help me, Bren, if you could all help me. Mm -hmm. Mighty God, you are awesome in this place. I don't know if I just heard it, sorry. Yep. Mighty God, you are awesome in this place, Abba Father. Father 
on my heart if we could all sing it there's peace in knowing Lord you're in control peace in knowing Lord you're in control you got your hand on my life you got a hold on my soul there's joy abundant I just have to tell I'm drinking sweet water from your living well there's peace in knowing Lord you're in control you got your hand on my life you got a hold on my soul there's joy abundant i just have to tell i'm drinking sweet water from your living well there's peace in knowing lord your reading this week in Romans 8 and 6 and I uh, usually read the Amplified and I'm just going to read it to you. I'll read it first and then I'll read it in the Amplified. For to be kindly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In the Amplified it says, now the mind of the flesh, flesh which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death that comprises all the miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul peace, both now and forever. And when I read that, it really spoke to my heart of how I was before I was saved. Yes. And how I searched to be happy, and I thought I was happy, and I tried to be happy, and all the things that the world tells you is going to make you happy. Yes. But I was never happy, and I knew I wasn't happy, and I didn't know why. But I found out. And when I became a Christian, and uh, 
And when I look back now, all these years, and how I changed, and how happy I am, and how peaceful I am, and the joy I have in my heart, and and it's His Word that makes me that. And when I read His Word and it speaks to me, I'm just I'm just so grateful because I'm nothing, and yet He cares for me. I'm thankful for the truth and what He's showing us. And Thank you, Lord. He's just so good to us. And I just I just can't even express what it means to me, this truth. And, and they all never talk in one day. And everything in here, anybody who has a question, it's all in here. The answers are all in here. And if the world would just look at it. It's just so clear. And I just couldn't not stand this morning because I'm just so grateful this morning. Thank you. I'm just so thankful for me. Thank you. Thank you for all of you. And I really love you all. And I'm thankful for the ministry and how God's speaking to them and speaking to us. And I just want to keep on keep on thanking him and praising him and just enjoying his word and his presence.
96, and he lives in the back of his home, in front of him. And Mom, all through the years, has tried to talk to him about God, and she's told him her experiences. And he never thought he needed him, didn't believe in him. But you know, sometimes when they get close to death, they change their mind. But mm -hmm. anyway, we went in yesterday to see him, just Mom and I, and he was in a very distressed way. And so we just started singing the old songs about Jesus. Thank you. And the Spirit of the Lord is in that room. Where is the Lord? And he called right now. And Mom was able to pray the sinner's prayer with him. Mm -hmm. And he accepted it. He, it. he kept saying, yes, Jesus, Jesus is the one. And it just did something to my mom. She was eight years old. She just was so thankful that the Lord gave us that opportunity. Yeah. And I just want to thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord.
Everybody's happy and content. Praise the Lord. We'll turn the service over to uh, Brother Fred. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you spared us for another day, but Lord, it's a wonderful time to live in, but Lord, yes, it is a, also a time of many trials and tests, but Lord, we're ever so thankful. We know, Lord, that you keep us every way, every step of the way. Lord, I just pray as we look into your word this morning that you would have your way. Use this vessel of clay as you would see fit. We we'll ask it now in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated this morning. What a day that we're living in. But we have to know what day it is, according to the scripture, according to the spirit of God, of the time we're living in. And when I look back in the Gospels, we look at the Gospels of Jesus Christ, what did Jesus know when he walked here on earth? He came, yes, to die on the cross of Calvary for each and every one of us. That we not only be saved, but be part of his bride, because that was the purpose of the calling of, of coming to the earth. To get a bride, the Lord was going to get a bride for the Lord Jesus Christ. But yet in 33 A.D., when he passed away he preached some parables that was not for his day it was for the future now some parables were for that period of time as well so he did not just only know what the words that we speak sometimes that what his direct words as he, he dealt with uh, the different disciples of the Pharisees and so forth but he knew a whole lot of things as he was growing up. But when the time came for his ministry, when we look at Matthew chapter 13, that whole chapter, well, Matthew chapter 13 spreads the whole grace age, doesn't it? The seven thens that uh, the apostle brother Jackson preached. Also how the separation would be at the end, that he would take things out of his kingdom. Matthew 24 and 25, the carcass. And he speaks about watches. Be, what, be careful to what watch you may be living in. There'd be more than one. But all, and when I look at Luke chapter 12, verse 36, him coming back and serving meat, he didn't do that. He served meat for his day. But not the one in Luke chapter 12, verse 36. And there is where he speaks, there's going to be three watches. And how wonderful that our eyes see that in this hour. Then he spoke it in 33 AD. But some of these parables are the living word. You are living in what he spoke about here at the end time. What a wonderful time that he fed us. We've been feeding 
on the word of God, whether the third pulled the carcass, the pounds, the meat, all these things were taking place in that period of time. Luke chapter 19. A lot of things that's actually, we're in the midst of Luke chapter 19. It's not completely finished yet, but that's going to be in our day. Before the bride leaves here, before the seventh seal is broke, there's some things that are going to transpire according to that chapter of Luke. Then Matthew 22, speaking about the end time, the one that didn't have the wedding garment. We look at that at just one point in time, but actually it covers from 1963 to till the seventh seal is broke. And so there would be, we have to realize at the same time, yes, we love what God's doing and we know that we're his children. But at the same time, if he's going to remove things that offend, he's going to bind some servants hand and foot. This is all happening. It's been happening since 1963, but a whole lot more in the hour that we live in. This is going to transpire. And that what he knew in 33 AD as a parable. Now whether he, the Lord had given him every detail of it, you and I don't know. But we know that what he spoke is now on ground, just like the prophets of old prophesied of the things in the future. But they didn't know exactly how that was all going to fulfill on ground. And we're privileged. I mean, the abundance of things that you and I have received in this hour we should be jumping up and down. Now, I can't jump this morning because of the situation. But, but like the sister is talking about, I rejoice in what he's given us. That fresh meat makes you alive. It's not a gospel of yesterday or the day before. We are living... We're, we're finishing that book of Acts. It's alive on ground. Yes, Jesus spoke of those parables, but those parables are now happening. Now granted, like I said before, there are some that meant for that period of time. But we're living in the time we're living in now. Then it came in 96 AD. I believe the great eternal spirit gave him some more understanding. Because now it's been from 33 A.D. that when he spoke about those parables in the end time, now in 96 A.D., he sends an angelic being to speak to servant John. He signified it by an angel, and I don't think it was a guardian angel or just an ordinary ministering angel. Who's the angel that we see in the scripture that carries the importance of revelation? It's the archangel Gabriel. And so it says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him. So God giving him some more revelation. Up to a point. Just Now, because revelation is given to him, it's not that he knows every detail, but he knows when he's going to transpire. And when it comes on ground, we get to see the details of it. And it says here, Which God gave unto his servant... Things which must shortly come to pass. And he s- sent and signified it by an angel. That's how God works, angelic beings. But then there had to be a vessel to communicate that verbally on the earth that wrote those things down. That was the Apostle John at the time. Who bore a record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now that test, when he says in in Revelation, you're in Revelation chapter 1, by the way. In verse 2 he says, Who bore record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. You link that with Revelation 19 and 10. Because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy that, yes, it speaks there, but one day when those those words come off the pages and come on ground. Jesus is not, you know, we don't hear him prophesying in heaven, but it means the prophetic picture, he relates it in its proper time frame. And what have we been seeing in this hour? How wonderful things are. All right. In, 
Before I go too far, I just want to bring this part in. And some say, well, you just... Sounding off. It's not meant to sound off. If the Lord has given you something, and I don't warn the people, then their blood is on my hands. But if you speak it, then the blood's on their heads. Because no servant of God has control over. All he can do is speak the word of God that, that gives it to him. In the last sermon I preached in April 29, the intellectual believers heated up and threw it out, part four. It, to me, the Spirit of God was looking behind the scenes and how the Spirit of Satan had infiltrated and caused such division in the body of Christ. Now, it's not meant to condemn everyone that I spoke of. That's not the point. But the spirit that was operating in in there, and I only touched part of what was in that at that time. Now we and our brothers talking about how that the church parallels Israel. It didn't go 24 hours after that sermon that Netanyahu put on display how God had opened up the eyes to the world, how Satan was working behind the scenes. The two was being exposed at the same time. Well, you say that while well, you're just putting coincidence together. Watch. I believe if that be the case, that God's using a man in Israel, not just the man, but there had to be the people on the ground that found this thing out of the secret things that that Iran was doing, Israel's enemy, how Satan was working behind the scenes. If it's getting that close, then somewhere that miracle war is not too far down the road. And if the Lord has caused to expose the undercurrent that's not so much in a pulpit, but going in behind the scene, what is actually happening. If God wanted to expose it, then we must be getting near to our miracle war. Because there's going to be a spiritual warfare. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to be at war with anybody, neither do I. But why are we looking in that way? First of all, what's the buildup that we see that that what's happening and what we see on ground with the different different revelations, different groups and the whole on yards that's taking place? They're just as scattered in the Jackson movement as what I seen in nineteen seventy seven of the Branham movement which I got a little glimpse of. In, let's, uh, I, it's, I pray that I can bring it out the right way. Let's look at the, let's say, picture yourself now this morning in the days of Brother Branham. The message got a hold of you. Not so much the message, but maybe the miracles The wonderful things God's doing. And that sort of gives a witness to you. That's God. I mean, even a terror can tell when God's doing something. And so people got attached when he went from from the restoring. And then he started preaching the word. Then there's an element of people that because of that they followed the prophet. But what? It took a long time period of time for Satan to desensitize the believers under Brother Branham's ministry. And it's so deceptive because it's like this. Had we been living there, we've seen all those wonderful things. You can't deny it was not God. But what they didn't realize was 
they were losing their first love. They were, well, he said this before is right. Everything he says got to be right. And so therefore, as the intellectual part of man now is looking at the word that's coming forth, it's an intellectual understanding he's getting. And the Holy Spirit that should be verifying what he's receiving and causing that to grow in the believer's life, they would have easily walked into Brother Jackson's message. So it's, it wasn't done in a five, ten years. Over the space of time, it's, like any man, it's just like any man that you may see that God's using. If you start relying because the man says it rather than the Holy Ghost confirming every step of the way, Satan knows how to trick you. Because then you put, really what the end result is, they have confidence in the man and what the man said. Well, they say, no, I believe God's word is God, is God that brought it. Yes, it's God that brought the word. But what's you, the way you look at it, because what the evidence is, is when you speak or come across them, what Brother Branham said. Brother Branham said this. No, well, if we take it to the Bible, well, Brother Branham said that. That's why Brother Jackson had a hard time. When he went to different places where Brother Branham was at, they said, well, we don't want to hear what you have to say. They didn't want to hear the word of their day after Brother Jackson passed away. They want to hear everything Brother Bram said. And so, therefore, Satan has deceived them. Now, I'm not pointing them all as being tares. You may be deceived for a while, but somewhere before the seven seal is broke, God could wake some of those people up and start seeing a truth. Because after 65 years... I believe they're starving for to hear something. An entertaining sermon is fine to get the people routed up and, and you know, get clapping at a, you know, a real Holy Ghost song going. But it's not the same as the truth that's within you. Now, as we see how that's played out in the days of Brother Branham, Brother Jackson was almost here for 40 years. It took a while... For some to get attached to what he was saying. And they could see the revelatory truth. And in those earlier days, it had to be the Holy Ghost that was sort of lifting it up and showing, hey, it's steady. His revelation don't change. Now, when I say his revelation don't change, some, some naysayers there in, in the far end edge of the group would say, well, he said this at that time and he said something else. God can grow a man in a revelation. That don't make it false. I said, don't make him false. And God allows the man to see certain things too. He did with Brother Branham. He did with Brother Jackson as well. All right. So, what do we look at in the days for the majority, especially if they've been long under the ministry of that apostleship? They come dependent because he said it, it's gospel. And if anyone says anything any further, that's false. The same trick that Satan played with the Brandon movement has played with those that's following Brother Jackson. If they've been only after they left the Holy Ghost rather confirming things and just on their own intellectual understanding go down that road. Now, there's two sources in the world. There's the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and good and evil. What is that knowledge? He can know as much as you do, but it's not a real revelation to him. It's just Satan allows him to have an understanding for a period of time. So that, and you hear, well, my warning bells went off. Well, it depends what tree you're of. Because the tree of knowledge of good and evil has warning bells too. Because they'll say, well, that don't mean because something warning went in me. That don't, don't count a whole hill of beans with God at all. You can have all kinds of bell ringing going off if you want. 
All right? So what's actually transpiring? That we, we can cover it in a, in a certain scripture. If we turn to 1 Peter this morning, chapter 4, verse 17. For the time is come. When is that time supposed to be? That judgment must begin at the house of God. Where's that? That's where the believer, where the Holy Ghost message is being brought. That would be from 1963 till the seventh seal. Well, you say, brother, that's your opinion. Well, you believe what you want. If it first begins at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Now, what is the gospel? Is it just what Jesus preached when he walked here on earth? What the apostles brought? Because remember, Jesus spoke some prophecies when he walked here on earth. But his actual fulfillment is happening now. He's speaking, and the conditions are on earth that it's actually transpiring. And that's what he's speaking directly to you and I. Had we been in the days of Jesus, like with Peter, Paul, and the twelve disciples hearing it, well, that was nice, Lord. It gives me an overview of what may be future somewhere. And it may excite you that you've seen something about the future a bit. But a whole lot, what is it? Isn't it a whole lot more when you're in it? When it's on ground? You can see it. Praise the Lord. And when we talk about that comforter, that's the secret. That is the means. It is the spirit of your and my heavenly father. It's him we should go checking to to see whether things are scriptural or not. Not just because a preacher said so. Not because I said so. Let the Holy Spirit in you bring you to that word. And not just bring you to the word. But somehow that same Holy Spirit that brought you to salvation should be bringing and confirming in your life as he speaks to each individual where the scripture stands. It doesn't mean you have to understand everything in details, but praise the Lord, somewhere it has to be there. But then, if it's the other kind that's of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he goes to his intellect this makes sense. Then it goes from making sense that, yeah, I think it's true. Then it goes from making, making sense that it's true, then they preach it. Or they speak it. So there's two trees that are still in operation in the hour that we live in. All right. I listened to a message seems, I know that I keep going back in the last week or so, or for three weeks, to the message that Brother Brandon has been speaking when he spoke from 63 to 65. And he talked about doing a, doing a work for God without his will. And he brings about how David, King David, wanted to bring the ark to Jerusalem. The people wanted it. He wanted it. They got enthused with it. He even had a new cart built. And they were bringing it on the way down. And then there was a young man by Uriah. As the cart sort of tumbled, he went to steady the ark and God killed him. It was not according to to what how it had been shown how the ark is supposed to be transported from place to place. First of all, the cart that was there should have been sufficient. It had to be the Levite to carry it. Not because of excitement. Not because it's a new revelation. We're going to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. 
All right. So, in that we have to know what the will of God is by the Spirit of God and how He's leading us in this hour. I don't know about you, but, but hearing different things. I don't mean to judge, but sometimes you have to know what's going on. That because the Lord's coming soon, we have to get ready. You got to get the old man in tip top shape so to be ready. But that's only the inner man. Well, first of all, what is sanctification? Is it you trying to do the work through the Word of God to get there? When Jesus said, I sanctify myself for their cause, that they may be sanctified through the words that I preach. He didn't, was not preaching about cleaning your life. He's talking about the word that would come and clean them. Because what, it, what does it mean to be sanctified? It means to be dedicated to love the Lord, to work for Him. And if you, that is in your life, that will clean the other stuff. But if you're hitting the other stuff, and you instead of looking at the real source, you got the cart before the horse. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ that we have no unbelief. Right? You all believe that, right? Well, it's scriptural. You can say yes. Okay. Maybe I'll take a page from Brother Mims. What is it? What did you say? <laughs> well, I don't mean to put it that way. And so, we've lo- lo- lost sight in wanting because knowing that the Lord's coming soon. That really, what is sanctification? Yes, it has to do with cleaning every little detail or things that are in your life. But remember, you're in a fallen vessel of clay. And the only time you get rid of everything that's in your vessel is when, I, when you get changed. But the important part is not the little eyes here and there. Now, Grant, I'm not saying you, you allow those things. But if we are dedicated to wanting to follow the Spirit of God in our life, that gives us life, and that comes by the fresh word of God that makes you alive, that wants to be more dedicated to move with God, then that word that comes on ground is cleansing you. Abraham was made righteous by the things he gave up. By believing the word of God for his day. And you and I are is made righteous because we we'll believe the God for this day, not the days of Brother Branham, not the days of Brother Jackson, as good as those things are, but this is this day that God is looking at you and I. We do, we're not living there, we're living here. Well, when you talk about that, they think, well, you're trying to put down the Gospels and the Epistles, the, the Gospels of, of the Apostles and, and the Epistles of Jesus Christ. That's a terror that we talk like that. Aren't you enthused this morning? Aren't you alive, wanting to live more for the Lord as truth comes in? Yes, it is revelation. But remember, we're living in this time frame that's here from 63. We're actually in this third watch. It's that fresh word of ground that God opens up more understanding. It brings a joy, and that joy lifts you up, and you get more enthused, and you will get more dedicated to walk with the Lord. He's doing the drawing. And it's by the word of God he's going to get a five-fold ministry in place. Now... There's coming a great shaking in world events and among the bride movement. How is God going to shake it? Is he going to take the planet and give it a good shake, give it a twist or something like that? No. 
the decisions, everyone that's following the Lord in this hour, where you stand and where you're looking at God's Word is going to determine when that final big shake is going to take place. When He shakes the nations around Israel... He's not going to shake the planet to do that. He's going to come divinely and in, intervene in a miraculous war. Not only that Israel will get all her land, but in it the presence and the power of God is going to wipe out among the Jewish half, Jewish half brother, they'll wipe out of their minds Allah. It'll bring a judgment. Some will turn and want to bring gifts to Israel. The, the majority probably will. Or, I, I don't know what percentage. But there's going to be a change. There's a change in the nature of the Jews. No longer the God of Moses. They say that God has brought us in the land today. It was His doing and His working that did it. Now take that to the spiritual side of things now. You know what I spoke about two weeks ago. But then there's others associated with Brother Jackson's movement that has gone into error. You take Amos in Nigeria. The, the, the John ministry and other things. Rolf Stroman in Norway, the Jehu, the No Miracle War. Tim McKay, while he was dealt with, never changed yet. Then there is another group that's sort of like the group, not the same group that I mentioned two weeks ago, but in Cullman, Alabama, in Montgomery, Illinois, in Colorado, or Chicago, there's one in Chicago if you want to. We look at it in Chicago. They have banded all kind of, sort of, in one bunch. And they all, don't all believe the same thing either. Then there's uh, Richard Gann and a whole, I mean, you could go name them after, but what I'm trying to say, hey, there's a whole bunch of different things all over the map. And everyone believes they're the bride. Wow. Is God going to rapture a confused bride? Or do we miss something somewhere? And no amount of maybe trying to present something to them, it just aggravates them. They get upset if you touch their pet revelation. The church in Indiana... Face Assembly, Indiana. Now, I know this has been a long while, and I only went up to to way to uh, 2011, and I said, "Well, that's enough. They've gone so far off the map, and it's not even close." They went into the third day, the Sea of Glass. Uh, they put that in a different place. Seven women, one man in the millennium. Uh, one preacher said that Indiana, that some, not all the bride Indiana is upon the sea of glass. Uh, the serpent uh, had a perverted relationship, act of sodomy with Eve. They never straightened some of those things out. They claimed 144,000 are going to be raptured. Uh, one preacher claimed that it's not an angel, but by a prophet that uh, that angel of that is in Revelation 22 and 9. Uh, one preacher said that the lake of fire was in the center of the earth. And if they're listening, if they happen to hook on, why don't you address this if you're claiming to be so righteous and so be the, the bride of Christ? And because you have numbers, hey, the brand of movement outnumbers you. So there's no safety in numbers. The fan, well, that was the other. I mean... Oh, and on the blood moon, they were kind of pushing the uh, the blood moon. 
and those that have left have committed the unpardonable sin. Now that's just some of the things that was that was from 2005 to 2011. They've done some other things late of, as of as they've been going on, but they're going off the rails. They won't bring it to the word. They have an intellectual understanding of the scripture. That's all I can see. Now with all these different groups that I've mentioned here this morning and two weeks ago, nobody's budging. They're adamant. And if you speak something to them or trying to wake them up, It's like in the what God told Cain. The Lord said, "Why is I, why are you wroth? Why are you mad, Cain? Why is thy countenance fallen? Why do you look grim and sad about what's been, what was I'm telling you? Why does this put you in the wrong light? Why do you have such a long face? Is it because you've been?" Brought to task by the word of God. And what does God tell Cain? If you do right, you would be accepted. But did Cain did right? He went off and done, done worse. That's the two spirits that have been running all through ever since the day of Adam and Eve. Right up to now. Now... Of the groups of Cullman, Montgomery, and Colorado, they're still trying to prove 2004, the two days ended. They believe the 144,000 is sealed before the week of Daniel. Now they have a new one. In Ezekiel 38 and 39, when God calls for fire on Gog and Magog, that's one of those prophets who's going to be prophesying and calling that down. It's not that type of calling down. God's going to use the nation to fire rockets and military things to put these nations down. First of all, if a prophet was to do that in that time of, or after Ezekiel 39 to put those nations down, two things comes into conflict. That would make that prophet shine bright as the stars of heaven. My Bible tells me the bride of Jesus Christ is going to shine like the stars of heaven first. Then they shine in the week of Daniel. Not before. And I'm sure they probably don't want to hear that. And if they go on and put things, I'm not going to argue with them. I'm just letting them know that, hey, you're not really on the word as far as scripture when we're speaking things here. And so, now, with everything is set in their position, that's why God has allowed time after Brother Jackson passed away, see those that was under that ministry, where they were growing up, how did you listen? And did you let Satan deceive you that you understand things intellectually? No, they won't say, I understand intellectually, it's God showing me. Really? Really? Then why are you refusing the word for this hour? It's the same like the Brandon movement. They could say the same thing. Why were they refusing Brother Jackson in his hour? Because they went from, uh, from in believing intellectually in their one that they were hearing the message from. So now, this is all going to come to a showdown. When God starts to move in a divine measure... With Israel, it's going to happen quickly. Somewhere, God's going to move by His Spirit with the nine spiritual gifts as well for the bride. And He's going to expose every factions of revelation that groups have gone into. And it's best to know what we believe because God is not going to say, well, 
Okay, well, change your mind. He's going to come down hard. Because when he goes hard against the enemy of Israel, he's going to come hard when that time arrives. There's something coming from heaven that's going to shake, finally, this whole bride to get her, and then it'll shake out all the things that don't want to line up with God's word. And there won't be, well, I have the Holy Ghost and I'm part of the bride. Not when you have that presence going to be standing and start exposing things. It's one thing to speak against another servant and say, well, he was wrong and he's wrong and he's right and whatever the case may be. But when the Spirit of God comes down on it, oh my. The fear, the knees will start to shake. Maybe we should have had a second look. Maybe we should have been relying on the things, on that comforter that is supposed to show you and I where we're at. Rather than the intellectual understanding of the scripture or getting it from the source of knowledge of good and evil. Satan is his servants. He can confirm to them that they're doing the right thing. There's no false prophets or false teachers that's going to say, hey, I'm wrong. I want to preach you wrong this morning. They believe, and they believe God's confirming to them what they have. It's like in the days of Jeremiah and Hananiah. Jeremiah says it's going to be 70 years. He comes around later. No, don't worry, fellas. The Lord showed me it's only going to be two. So this sets up a conflict. But when war came, Hananiah didn't fare well, did he? That's in Jeremiah. Well, brothers and sisters, it's, how else is going to be... What other things that... There's no preacher that can preach a... a a powerful enough sermon to change any one of their minds. Forget it, that it will never happen. They're set in their ways. They're not going to move or budge till God gets on the scene and does something. You are, and I are living near that point. Because the confusion that reigns today in the movement, I don't know how much further that can it go. And God's not going to confirm everybody's revelation. Well, you all come together. Yeah, yours okay. Yeah, well, maybe that. No, no. He's going to come according to his word. And when he does, it may be like in the book of Acts in the earlier days. He kept the church clean. And what about if the days of Ananias and Sapphira comes again? And one of them would be preachers try to dress you down, and the Spirit of God says, That's enough. You're taking, you're, taking off the, you're taking off the picture. It can get serious right now. Oh, yeah, everything's fine. Uh, yeah, the war's in the Middle East, and yeah, we have a few problems with economics a little bit, but this ain't going to remain like this. It's going to get to the place when we near the end that God is going to really... He, what else can... How else is it going to be confirmed? And of all those different groups, who's going to change their minds and try to come as one? And then let's say, well, well let's sit down and reason together. If you're not willing to move and I'm not willing to move, then all the coming together ain't going to do nothing. And the only option God has is to come, spiritually speaking, in a spiritual war. When he shakes the natural earth for Israel, he's going to shake this bride. And if that war, I'm not saying it's tomorrow, but if it happens this year, There'll be no time to pedal back. Well, let's go look and see what, what was really said. 
you fought against it. You're not fighting. It's one thing to fight against a servant, but if you're fighting against his word that he's bringing on ground in this hour, you ain't going to fare no better than the Pharisees that stood before Jesus Christ. It's in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26. We can just read that before we maybe dismiss this morning. I don't want to be too long up here because I've got to conserve his strength a little bit. So in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, In verse 26. Well, we can read from verse 25 because really, that's what brings about the shaking. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. And every little group sees it speaking differently. Because if it was speaking the same thing, we'd be all believing the same thing. And we're not. For if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth... Much more shall not we not escape if we turn from him that speaketh from heaven. Oh yeah, speaking from heaven. Well, how's it the word gets from heaven to earthly ears, uh, not ears, but ears on your head to hear something. An angel, he sends an angel, an angel anoints a servant, and that word comes forth. And he says, whose voice is the voice that shook the earth. But now has promised, saying, once more I shall not only shake the earth, but the heavens also. The heavens is really speaking about the spiritual side where the bride is at. Not just Israel, but within the bride. Or the movement, if you want to. And this word, yet once more signify the removing of those things that are shaking as the things that are made and those things which cannot be shaken may remain. And the only thing can remain in the movement is God exact revelated word. It's the hour. We've been looking at the climax. It could be closer than you and I think. Israel is getting be, be more brave, brazen, more brave. They're standing up to the enemy. No, we're going to, Jerusalem is ours. No, that's going to be our land. Like the brothers testifying this morning. If Israel is getting brave and brazen like that, knowing what God is doing for them, how much more the bride? Oh no, she should be so meek, so humble. Anybody can say boo and she gets scared. He's not looking for a wishbone. He's looking for a backbone. But when you say things like that, it's not looking to, to make a worldwide ministry and the whole thing to go on TV and satellites and things like that. It's to the bride of Jesus Christ. Somebody's got to speak something somewhere. Now, I don't mean to shout at you. It's just, I get excited. It's the hour that we're living in. It's the day we're living in. And if you want to turn to, Rev as I finished, I said I was going to use that, but one more scripture, you don't mind. Let's go to Revelation chapter 10 now. And in verse 6, And swear by him that liveth forever and ever that created the heavens and the earth and the things therein that are and the earth and the things that are therein the seas that are the things therein that there should be time no longer. But then when we look at in verse 7 but in the day but it says but in the days it's plural not singular 
of the voice of the seventh angel. Oh, that's Brother Brown. The source of the voice is Jesus Christ. He gave it to Brother Branham. So in the days when that voice, when the Lord would start with that shout, days is plural. How do we see that? Let me put it this way. That voice goes from 63 till the seventh seal. The voice of the day singular of Brother Branham. That's one day. The day of Brother Jackson, two days. The days of the fivefold ministry, three days. That makes it plural. So he says, in the days of that voice as it's going through, not just in 1963 to 65, but from 63 down to that seventh seal being broke. So in that days, what does it say in verse 7? When that angel begins to sound... That's, seven, eight, that's when the messenger, when Brother Bram, that's what starts it. That gives you the starting point. The mystery of God should be finished. Now the Branham movement back then, it says mystery singular. Brother Bram hadn't touched it all so much. They were looking at the mysteries, plural, that's in the Bible, should be finished. The mystery here is the grace age. The grace age should be finished. But in the grace age, all the mysteries should be revealed. So the mystery plural are in what's called the mystery, which is the grace age. And that understanding that mystery is that grace age is what the Apostle Paul spoke about it. And how Brother Jackson brought it out in, in when he was alive, how it was the grace age. And it is... Those mysteries were not all revealed in the days of Brother Branham or Brother Jackson. There are mysteries in this hour that's been revealed. The mystery of Luke chapter 12. The mystery of Luke chapter 19. It was, Jesus spoke it, but it's now live on ground. That, that's no longer a mystery. You are living in it. It's around you. <laughs> if I could jump, I'd jump this morning. But I thank the Lord. Now, if those that listen by the way of the internet, I don't mean this to condemn you. I just want to wake up, have a look at the Word of God if you are interested in this Word. And not by your preconceived mind and what you listen here this morning and you got certain ideas about it. Let the Holy Ghost, because if you lost your first love, that Holy Ghost shown you, giving you the vindication, and you went on your understanding how you read things and look at things, sure, you not see it that way. You won't see it. But if you have the Holy Ghost, and every child of God has the Holy that's going to be in the bride, has the Holy Ghost, they'll see it alike. Now, two weeks ago, I forgot to mention Brother Sindra in Norway. He sees, that group sees it. They say, go on a little further. Now, he's not on the internet, but he preaches to the people in Norwegian. Never had I been of all the messages that I ministered to because you can see a certain amount of traffic when that sermon was preached two weeks ago there's been triple the interest connecting now not that I mean everybody wants to know and believes it but it woke some people up to have a look hey something somewheres and if it can wake those that are maybe not so much affiliated, but if you can look, take the Holy Ghost and see, uh, not because I said it, but let the Holy Ghost lead you and not your intellectual mind lead you. And I'll let God, not, I don't have to let God, God will confirm His own word. I long to see the, the bride of Christ coming together. 
but there's no sermon you can say today to anyone that will actually move any of them. It's going to take a divine intervention by God. Now that is going to be wonderful too, but I long to see those nine spiritual gifts. And it's not just to the preacher. I love to see it being made manifest, but I can't go say, now you got to get that, you got to storm heaven. Like the oil message. They didn't have to storm heaven. God put that desire. And if somehow that desire starts to move on you, then move in it. Well, I'm scared to make a mistake. Well, me too. But if what God has taught you in those gifts, how they should be operated, sure, we might... I'm not going to step on your neck because, hey, you said that wrong that first time. No, sir. I'm going to give God some room. But on the other hand, we should not go wild because how we use it. Remember, he has to be directing it. Just as he's directing his word in this hour. Well, I'm out of breath now, so that's enough. But are you happy? I don't know about you, I... I've got a peace in knowing, like that song. There's a peace in, in knowing. I know where I stand with the Lord. Not because of my goodness. There's probably people or preachers that are walks more closely to God than I do. Well, why'd you say that? Well, just ask my wife. Ask her about my patience. But does that distract who God wants to choose and use? He's looking for someone that somebody will have enough backbone to say something. That don't make you anything. If God don't give anything, you are nothing. <laughs> or I'm nothing. But if God's in it, he works on both ends. Well, enough is enough. Are you still happy this morning? Oh, praise the Lord. Yes, things in the days to come, I believe God's going to start stirring it. And if it's been 70 years, somewhere's close. And if that miracle war happens this year, I guarantee you there'll be a lot of movement, storm in heaven. The days of playing around and I'm in my own corner and I know what I got is over. Conventions. Now there's a convention going on, but they're in a certain group, and only their little group within the what they accept and what's there is is being preached there. God was in conventions for a while, but it's through the means of that internet that God is reaching His predestinated seed, and it may there's it's reaching people that I don't know. They don't write. The only time you get something right if we go off the air or something in that line. Well, I'm, I'm through. <laughs> Let's stand. If someone still has a need, if the musician will play a, a hymn or song. Or, praise the Lord.
Thank you, Father. Uh, I just want to wish all the mamas in here a happy Mother's Day. And all the mamas that have gone on before us, um, everybody happy? Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this day. You've seen this moment in time, Father. We are blessed to be standing here. Father, I pray that the words that we hear would paint a picture in our minds, in our hearts, that we understand the time and the day in which we live. Thankful for the word that is on ground, Father. Father, we pray that you would be with us as we go our separate ways this day. Father, lead and guide us, Father, in our speech, in our deeds, in our walk. Help us always to be a witness for you, Lord. Father, we give you thanks. 
In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hey.